Hello, dear students. Today we are going to have a discussion on theory of emotional development or psychosocial development given by Eric Erickson. I am Dr. Eram Khan, Assistant Professor at IASE, Faculty of Education, Jamia Millia Islamia, New Delhi. So, first of all, let us see that what do we exactly mean by emotions and psychosocial development. These two are the most important terms uh, on which this entire th theory depends on. So, the first term is emotions. So, let, let us see what exactly emotions are. Emotions are biological states associated with the nervous system brought on by neurophysiological changes variously associated with thoughts, feelings, behavioral responses and a degree of pleasure or displeasure. Then the next term is psychosocial development. Psychosocial development refers to the emotional and psychological changes happening across the life cycle that occur in the context of the individual's social environment. So now let us see the Erickson's theory of psychosocial development. Eric Erickson was a stage theorist who took Sigmund Freud's controversial theory of psychosexual development and modified it as a psychosocial theory. Now, Erickson emphasized that the ego makes positive contributions to development by mastering attitudes, ideas, and skills at each stage of development. This mastery helps children grow into successful contributing members of the society. So uh, basically Erickson's uh, theory is having eight stages of psychosocial development. During each of Erickson's eight stages, there is a psychological conflict that must be successfully overcome for a child in order to develop into a healthy, well-adjusted adult. So let us uh, basically check on what exactly was the background behind this theory which Erickson has developed. So in the background, uh, we have got the theory of uh, psychosexual uh, development which was given by uh, Sigmund Freud. So Erickson developed his eight stages of psychosocial development based on uh, Sigmund Freud's psychosexual theory. Uh, we will just have a look a very brief look on what exactly this uh, theory of Freud has to say. According to Freud, sex is the life urge or fundamental motive in life. All physical pleasures arising from any of the organs or any of the functions are ultimately sexual in nature. Sexuality is not only the characteristics of adults, but children also from the very beginning have sexual desires. He further discussed about the different stages with respect to the psychosocial development. So now let us see the stages of psychosocial development which were given by Erickson. So Erickson introduced his theory through the postulates that the development of an individual is the result of his interaction with the social environment. Erickson's uh, stages of psychosocial development are based on and expanded upon Freud's psychosexual theory. Uh, Erickson proposed that we are motivated by the need to achieve competence in certain areas of our life. According to psychosocial theory, we experience eight stages of development over our lifespan from infancy through late adulthood. At each stage, there is a crisis or task that we need to resolve. Successful completion of each developmental task results in a sense of competence and a health, uh, like, like a healthy personality. Uh, failure to master these tasks lead to feelings of inadequacy. Uh, then uh, Erickson also added, to Freud's stages by discussing the cultural implications of development. Certain cultures may need to resolve the stages in different ways based upon their cultural and survival needs. So, 
uh, now we will just go on uh, seeing that what exactly these stages are like the stages of psychosocial development according to the age span so right now you can see that there is a table uh, which is showing uh, the brief idea it, it it can give you a brief idea that what exactly the stages of psychosocial development are uh, and then what was the uh, like specific age or period which was given by Erickson uh, regard like in front of every that particular stage so you can see that the first stage here which is mentioned is trust versus mistrust and uh, it goes on uh, like it starts with the birth to uh, one and a half years so in this way uh, all those eight stages were defined and characterized by uh, Erickson. So we will see all these stages one by one. So I'm coming to the next uh, part. Uh, we can see here the stage number one. This stage or, or the first stage is called as trust versus mistrust. Now let us see that what exactly this stage is all about. This stage starts from birth uh, to one or one and a half year of age. Uh, basically, the infants must learn that adults can be trusted. So in this stage, this is the foremost thing. This occurs when adults meet a child's basic needs for survival. Infants are dependent upon their parents. So the parents responsive and sensitive to their infants need help their baby to develop a sense of trust. Their baby will see the world as a safe, predictable place. Unresponsive parents, on the other hand, who do not meet their baby's need can give rise to feelings of anxiety, fear and mistrust. Their baby may see the world as an unpredictable place if infants are treated cruelly or their needs are not met appropriately they will likely grow up with a sense of mistrust for people in the world. So it is very important to develop this particular uh, thought process where a child or a small baby makes uh, or develops trust on the parents or the caregivers or whosoever is actually taking care of this child. So this is the first uh, stage, which is this uh, stage of trust versus mistrust so now let us see the uh, stage number two which is autonomic versus shame and doubt so this stage uh, starts from the age of one and a half to three years uh, so when uh, this stage begins uh, as a small children uh, they begin to explore their world they learn that they can control their actions and act on the their environment to get results they begin to show clear preferences for certain elements of the environment such as food toys and clothing a small child's main task is to resolve the issue of autonomy versus shame and doubt by working to establish independence this is the uh, like i will do it uh, kind of stage for example uh, we might observe a growing sense of autonomy in a two-year-old girl who wants to choose her clothes and dress herself. Although her outfits might not be appropriate for the situation, her input in such basic uh, decision has an effect on her sense of independence. If she is denied with the opportunity to act uh, like this uh, on, on the choices which she is going to have uh, for, the, for the clothing which she is going to wear, she may begin to doubt her abilities, which could lead to low self-esteem and feelings of shame. So this is the responsibility of the parent that some sort of autonomy can be provided to a child which is undergoing this stage, this particular stage number two. So now uh, we will just move to the next stage and this stage is basically the stage number three and uh, this is the stage of initiative versus guilt so let us see what exactly uh, is the age group which uh, according to erickson basically lie under this stage so uh, once children reach the preschool stage 
which is uh, the age group of 3 to 6 years they are capable of initiating activities and assessing control over their world through social interactions and through different activities like playing and all by learning to plan and achieve goals while interacting with others preschool children can master this task initiative which is a sense of ambition and uh, responsibility occurs when parents show a child to explore within limits like there should be a limit because uh, they, the children are very small so uh, the, the parents allow a child to explore within limits and then support the child's choice. These children will develop self-confidence and feel a sense of purpose. Those who are unsuccessful at this stage with uh, their initiative uh, misfiring or suppressed by over-controlling parents may develop feelings of guilt. So again, the responsibility of uh, parents or caregivers is tremendous because if the child is uh, st starting to feel guilty then uh, the person this this particular person with, who is a child of a very uh, like tender age is not going to take any initiative in in her or his life so we have to be very cautious in this stage uh, which is the stage of initiative versus guilt now let us see the next so the next stage uh, or the stage number four is basically the stage which is known as industry versus inferiority. So during the elementary school stage, uh, which normally starts from the age of uh, six to 12, uh, children face the task of industry versus inferiority. Children begin to compare themselves with their peers, their friends and all they either develop a sense of pride and accomplishment in their schoolwork, sports, then social activities and family life, or they feel inferior and inadequate because they feel that they don't match up equally or uh, the, uh, their peers or friends are better than, uh, than them. So uh, this type of feeling, uh, feeling start arising. If children do not learn to get along with others or have negative experiences at home or with their peer group, an inferiority complex might develop into adolescence and the adulthood uh, scenario of these uh, children. So this is again very uh, like to be uh, taken care of kind of stage uh, when if this uh, feeling of inferiority complex has uh, started to uh, to be there in this child uh, the whole life is going to be with that particular inferiority complex so we have to be very careful uh, once we are dealing with this particular stage so now let us the next stage which is uh, stage number five and uh, it is known as the stage of identity versus role confusion uh, in adolescence, uh, basically in the age group of 12 to 20 around, uh, individuals face the task of identity versus role confusion. According to Erickson, an adolescent's main task is developing a sense of self. Adolescents struggle with questions of identity and life purpose. Along the way, most adolescents try on many aspects of their personality to see which one fits. They explore various roles and ideas. They set goals and attempt mm -hmm. to discover their adult and mature selves. Adolescents who are successful at this stage have a strong sense of identity and are able to remain true to their beliefs and values in the face of problems and other people's perspectives. When adolescents are apathetic, do not make a conscious search for identity or are pleasured to, con uh, to confirm to their parents' ideas of the future, they may develop a weak sense of self and experience role confusion. They will be unsure of their identity and confused about the future. 
adolescents who struggle to adopt a positive role will likely struggle to find themselves as adults so uh, this particular stage uh, is is somehow uh, a stage when uh, the individual tries to integrate many roles the role of a small child role of sibling or a student or if uh, this person is interested in athletics so the role of athlete and then a worker or many more uh, and and tries to emulate a image as the image of this particular person's self so this this stage is the stage number 5 and it is known as identity versus role confusion so now we will uh, go on to the next stage and uh, this stage is basically this stage number 6 and this stage is uh, known as the stage of intimacy versus isolation basically people in early adulthood and uh, the phase of early adulthood the span of early adulthood normally is uh, from 20 years to 45 years of age they are uh, concerned with intimacy versus iso uh, isolation after we have uh, developed a sense of self in uh, adolescence we are ready to share our lives with others however if our stages uh, have not been successfully resolved young adults may have trouble uh, in developing and maintaining successful relationships with others so if if something wrong has happened in the earlier stages there is a possibility that maybe the later stages are going to get some sort of difficulties so according to erickson we must have a strong sense of self before we can develop successful intimate relationships adults who do not develop a positive self concept in adolescence may experience feelings of loneliness and emotional isolation so this is this may be one of the reasons why our elders always say that once you, uh, you are settled down you are actually uh, um, some somehow settled in your life then only go on uh, getting a partner and start uh, a kind of uh, married life so this may be one of the reasons so now let us see the next stage the next stage is the stage of generativity versus stagnation what exactly generativity versus stagnation stage has to do and uh, the age group basically the age group which lies under this stage is the middle adulthood and uh, according to erickson this particular age span starts from the age of 45 years and it goes on till the age of 65 years so when people are between the age of 45 to 65 years they enter the time known as middle adulthood the social task of middle adulthood is uh, generativity versus stagnation generativity involves finding um, you life's work and contribution to the development of others through activities such as uh making a volunteering action then mentoring somebody and raising children and all so during this stage uh, middle age adults begin contributing to the next generation often through caring for others they also engage in meaningful and productive work which contributes positively to the society those who do not master this task may experience stagnation so they they start feeling that they are not uh, actually useful for this society so this type of feeling is uh, comes uh, this type of feeling starts to come in their mind and uh, this this phase of stagnation starts so stagnation uh, uh, is is such a feeling which should be avoided so those who are uh, who do not master uh, the task of uh, of helping anybody or getting some sort of um, sad, uh, like uh, uh, some sort of uh, experience where they are uh, they are useful for the society they may experience stagnation and feel as uh, as if they are not leaving a mark on the world in a meaningful way 
uh, they start feeling that they are useful, uh, not not enough useful for the society. They may have a little connection with others and little interest in productivity and self-improvement. So all these things start to happen. So we have to be very careful if uh, if we have got a person who is uh, who is in um, the stage of uh, uh, this this particular stage, and uh, we see that this person is. Uh, uh, feeling some some sort of stagnation so we have to involve that person in some sort of productive work so now let us see the next stage and this stage is this st stage number eight uh, also known as the stage of integrity versus despair uh, this particular stage uh, starts from the age of 65 years and it goes on till the end of life we are in the period of development uh, known as uh, basically the late adulthood if we are in this particular uh, age group like after 65 years so erickson's uh, task at this stage is uh, called as integrity versus despair he said that people in late adulthood reflect on their lives and feel either a sense of satisfaction or a sense of failure People who feel proud of their accomplishments feel a sense of integrity and uh, they can uh, look back uh, and they can feel proud on uh, that what, what they have done. Uh, uh, they, they, they start looking back on their lives with, uh, with few regrets also. And uh, however, people who are not successful at this stage may feel as if uh, their life has been uh, wasted. Uh, they focus on what uh, would have been done by them, what uh, what should uh, have been like uh, completed by them, uh, what what may be uh, the thing which 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 is which was possible for them to do, but they were not able to. So these sort of thoughts uh, start to come to their minds. They face the end of their lives with feelings of bitterness, depression, and despair. So this is our responsibility that how we are going to uh, actually uh, remove uh, these type of thoughts which are coming in, our, in the minds of our elders. So we have to be very much helpful and very much uh, like a, a kind of uh, empathetic for them. If we see that anybody uh, who is uh, passing through this stage is in despair. So with this, we have come to an end to the, to the theory of uh, psychosocial development by Erickson. So now let us sum up what exactly we have studied. Erickson was a stage theorist who took Freud's controversial psychosexual theory and modified it into an eight stage psychosocial theory of development. During each of Erickson's eight development stages, two conflicting ideas must be resolved successfully so that a person can become a confident, contributing member of society. Failure in mastering these tasks lead to a feeling of inadequacy. The stages of psychosocial development included trust versus mistrust, autonomy versus shame or doubt, initiative versus guilt, industry versus inferiority, identity versus role confusion, intimacy versus isolation, generativity versus stagnation, and integrity versus despair. So this was all about the theory of psychosocial development by Erickson. I hope that uh, today's discussion was uh, useful and understandable to all of you. See you in the next session. Thank you so much.